All right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Good morning to everybody. Uh, Alhamdulillah, thank you guys for joining me. So we start our morning off with the morning supplications as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed us. مَا أَصْبَحَ بِي مِن نِعْمَةٍ أَوْ بِأَحَدٍ مِن خَلْقِكَ فَمِنْكَ وَحْدَكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ فَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ وَلَكَ الشُّكْرُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَحْيَانَا بَعْدَ مَا أَمَاتَنَا وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورُ رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّا وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ النَّبِيَّ وَرَسُولَهُ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ عَدَدَ خَلْقِهِ ورضا نفسه وزينة عرشه ومداد كلماته سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزينة عرشه ومداد كلماته سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزينة عرشه ومداد كلماته 
اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا صالحا متقبلا ولسانا ذاكرا شاكرا وقلبا خاشعا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم إنا نسألك خير ما في هذا اليوم فتحه ونوره ونصره وبركته وهدا ونعوذ بك من شرها في هذا اليوم وشر ما بعده O oh Allah, we ask you for the good that is in this day, its light, its blessings, uh, its opportunities, its successes, and its guidance. And we seek refuge with you from the evil that is in this day and the evil that comes after it. I mean, so alhamdulillah, um, I'm going to read another chapter from the book, The 70 Laws of Virtue, um, the untold story of Prophet Yusuf. All right, if you have the book, alhamdulillah, you can follow along. If you don't have the book, then you are sorely, sorely missing out. All right, you can purchase the book from our website, uh, rollthemasjid.com. You can go to our website and you can purchase the book, inshallah ta'ala. We have restocked the books, so we do have uh, more of the books, bi'ithnillah. All right, so um, for those of you who have the book, I'm going to be reading from law number 16. What is done in the dark will always come to the light. We're on uh, page 81. All right. This is uh, probably towards the beginning of the, so uh, of the story. All right. So for those of you who have the book, I'm reading from page 81. You can read along. You can take your notes. Right. You can jot down your notes and, um, you know, you can go back and, you know, listen to it again and review your notes and make connections between what you hear today from the author and what you thought you understood from what you read. All right. Okay. So let's, let's, let's take this journey. So law number 16, what is done in the dark will always come to the light. All right. And this is a law. This is a principle. And if you've lived long enough in your life, you've seen this happen many times over. Things that are done in the dark, they always come. They always have a way of coming to the light. So we start with the ayat, um, Surah number 12, ayah 18. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, rather, this is a lie that your own souls have forged. So a beautiful patience for me is more fitting. And Allah's help is sought against that which you have described. All right. So let me give you the backstory here. So this is the conversation that is between Prophet Yaqub and his sons, right? This is after the brothers threw Yusuf into a well. Um, they took his shirt from him. They slaughtered an animal. They poured blood from the animal on the shirt. And then they brought the shirt back to Prophet Yaqub. They brought the shirt back to their father. To justify their claims. And they said to Prophet Yaqub, you know, a wolf, you know, ate him. Uh, a wolf ate him while we were totally unaware. We were out playing. We weren't paying attention. And a wolf ate him. Prophet Yaqub, he was also, he was aware of the jealousy and the envy that the brothers had towards Yusuf and Benjamin. So that was one thing. And then, you know, he looked at the shirt. As we discussed in the story, and he said, "Why, well, how merciful is the wolf to my son that he ate him without ripping up his shirt. So he's looking at the context clues. He's looking at the clues to point to the fact that this is a lie. However, he didn't really know what the truth was. All right. He knew they were lying, but he didn't know what actually happened. And so he said to them, no, this is a lie that your own souls have forged. For sabrun jamil, so a beautiful patience is more befitting for me. And we'll talk about what beautiful patience is, right? Sabrun jamil, exemplary patience is more befitting for me. And Allah's help is sought against what you have described. Okay, so that's the backstory. All right. So Prophet Yaqub, he knew that his sons were lying about what happened to Yusuf. 
But being in the dark about the truth did not mean that the truth would never come to the light. And I want you guys to understand that. Being in the dark about the truth does not mean that the truth will never come to the light. You may not have all of the answers right now. You may not know what's going on fully at the moment, but give it time. Give it time. And I promise you, everything that was done behind your back, everything that was done in the dark will eventually expose itself. And we'll talk about why. So you have people who operate in the shadows. Like you have people who like to operate behind closed doors, operate in the shadows, operate in the darkness, right? But what they don't understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of Allah's names is Al-Haqq. Allah is the truth. He is the only truth. God is the only truth. And if God, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth, that means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves all truth. That means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid and support all truth. Even in due time. Malcolm X's truth did not manifest until after his demise. Rahimahullah. May Allah have mercy upon him. But his truth prevailed. <laughs> Nonetheless. Why? Because Malcolm's truth was aligned with the truth of God. And if God is the truth, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-haqq, Allah is the truth, then that means that Allah loves the truth, and that means that Allah will always aid and support the truth, even in due time. It doesn't have to happen when you want it to happen. And that's where we get jammed up. We get jammed up because we think in the moment that I am right. And this person is wrong. And I can't believe that God is allowing this to happen to me. Why is God allowing this to happen? Right? Because Allah does not move on your time. Allah does not have to give you the validation that you need in that moment. But trust and believe in due time. Right? In due time, that truth will expose itself. So sometimes you have to know, you have to walk away from a situation knowing that I was right. That's all I know. I know I was right. Whether the person saw it, whether everybody else saw it, whether everybody else agrees with it, that's neither here nor there. You have to stand on your truth and walk away from that situation knowing that you were right. And in due time, they will see it. And even if they don't see it, they will become enveloped by the falsehood. They will become enveloped by the, 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 the falsity of the situation that, you know, they agreed to. You know, sometimes, you know, this happens like if you're getting fired from a job, you have co-workers that are co-conspiring against you, right? They're working to get you fired, you know, and you might have followed protocol. You did exactly what was required of you according to your job description you did your job and even after you did your job you still got fired you still got reprimanded and you're trying to figure out how how does this happen and i did i followed the protocol that you gave me according to my job description but you don't know that there are people working in the shadows they were waiting for that slip up they were waiting for their opportunity and although you don't know who was behind it, you don't know, you know, who was directly responsible and right, we want justice right now. It's not going to happen right now. You might get fired from that job, move on, lo and behold, you find another job somewhere else. And years later, those same people who were involved in that, that coup or that, you know, that co-conspiring, you know, situation Every single one of them will succumb. Every single one of them will become encapsulated by their own falsity. Every single one of them. I promise you, I have lived long enough to see this play out multiple times. And so sometimes when you believe that you are right, when you know that you are right, you have to just fall back and exercise beautiful patience and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-haqq the truth 
who loves the truth, who aids and supports the truth, let him work the truth into the light in his own time. You understand? Let God work truth into the light. Let him manifest the truth into the light in his own time. But we too busy trying to get everybody to see that we're right. And that this person is wrong. And we get frustrated. And we get upset. You understand? Stop doing that. Because you're putting yourself before God. You're finding fault with God because he's not moving at your pace. You're finding fault with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How could God let this happen to me? How could Allah allow this to happen to me? Allah sees that I'm in the right why is he allowing this to go down like that? Because it is through that situation that Allah is going to open up another door for you and is going to open up another door for them, you know, leading to their ultimate destruction. You understand? God does not move at your pace. This is a hard lesson, man. I promise you, if you understand this here, when you are in the thick of that situation in the future, all of this information, this is why these are laws that we live our lives by. Prophet Yaqub, he didn't know exactly what happened, right? Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we are limited in our ability to prove someone wrong or to prove ourselves right. We're limited because we don't have all the information. We don't have all the facts, so we're limited in our ability to prove the person wrong, right? And this is especially true in the Muslim community because we'll be the first people to say, well, what's your proof? What's your delil? All right, I don't really know the ayat. <laughs> I don't know the ayat. I don't really know the hadith. And this is especially true with Muslim women because they're not really versed in the Quran like that. Many of them, they're not versed in the Quran like that. So when a brother says, well, what's your proof? The sister, she knows she's right. She knows she's right. But she just can't put her finger on the ayah. And the brother, he knows that. So he says, well, what's your proof from the Quran? What's your delil? <laughs> what is your delil? What is your proof? Okay, I don't really know the Quran. I'm not versed in the Quran like that. I don't really know the Quran like that. But I know that I'm right. Yeah, well, until you bring me some proof. It's like, all right, cool. All right. So in that moment, you have to just kind of Either do one thing, either go back and do some research and try to find the proof that you're looking for, right? And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the guider, Al-Hadi, the guide, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Hadi, he is the guide, he guides his creation, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Al-Hadi, Ya Hadi Al-Ibad, O guider of your servants, guide me to the information that I need to put this person, you know, on the right track. Not to prove the person wrong, but you want to correct them. You don't want them tread in a path that's going to lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger or displeasure. Don't do it for the purpose of proving the person wrong. Do it for the purpose of putting the person on the right track. Let, let me correct you so you don't wreck yourself. <laughs> let me correct you so you don't wreck yourself. You don't destroy yourself. All right? It's all about the intention. And then calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the appropriate name. Allah is Al-Hadi. He is the guide. You know, so sometimes, you know, we don't, we can't really put our finger on it. But we know that we're right. And we have to just kind of sit back and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the truth, the lover, the one who loves truth, let him aid and support the truth. So sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we are limited and our ability to prove someone wrong or to prove ourselves right. But these are the moments when we defer the matter to God. We defer it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Haq, the truth. Who loves the truth and who will always aid and support those who stand on the truth. Patience in these delicate moments is more befitting because it protects you from investing more of yourself in a situation than you have to offer. And that's where we go wrong. We start to put more, investing more of ourselves in a situation than you can stand to invest. And so sometimes you got to just fall back. 
Because if you start to invest more of yourself in trying to prove this person wrong, right, you'll end up being wrong even though you're right, right? You got a sister who goes through her husband's cell phone, right? Because you know he's messing around. You know he's, you know, messing with this woman. So you put a tracker on his phone and you're going through his phone. You're following him to work. You, you, you invest in so much. You investing so much of yourself into this situation. And then once you get to the bottom of it and you find out the truth of the matter, but look at all of what you did to get to that. It's not that it's not that serious. If you don't trust a man, then why are you with him? Once the trust has been breached, you don't need to go through the person's phone because you know that there is a likelihood that your intuition is correct because there is no trust. Because there is no trust. Why take yourself through all of this pain? Going through his phone, following him to work, looking through his phone records, trying to see who he's talking to. You start to invest too much of yourself into the situation, man. Patience. Patience in these delicate moments is more befitting because it protects you from investing more of yourself into a situation than you have to offer. Because while you are investing so much of your situation, you are losing out on you know time that you need for your children, time that you need for yourself, you're losing hair, you're gaining weight. You know, you, you, all of these things is happening to you as a result. As a result. When you could have said, you know what? I have a hunch. I have a gut feeling. But in due time, I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose it. I'll wait patiently. You understand? I'll wait patiently. You understand? I'll wait patiently. But we don't do that because we want to be the ones to expose that. But at the expense of what? At the expense of what? What are you going to risk to do that? And better believe there is a risk on your end. Without a doubt, there is a risk on your end. I'm not going through all of that. I'm not going through all of that. It protects you from becoming overwhelmed by a situation that you have very little control over. You understand? Patience in these delicate moments is more befitting because it protects you from investing more of yourself in a situation than you have to offer. It protects you from becoming overwhelmed by a situation that you have very little control over. Much of our frustration in life stems from trying to control situations and or people we have absolutely no control over. Much of our frustration in life stems from our trying to control a situation and or a person that we absolutely have no control over. That's where the frustration comes from. And sometimes we have to learn to let go and trust that the higher authority, i.e. God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to let go and trust that the higher authority in our lives will bring the truth of the matter to the surface where everyone can see it. You understand? This is not some theoretical approach to life happenings or occurrences. This is real. We are seeing this play out right here in front of us in the story of Prophet Yusuf. We are seeing this play out right here. Here's Yusuf, who who's Yaqub, who lost his son. His other sons come back to him with a narrative. He knows it's, the, it's false. He knows that it's a lie. He said to them, rather, this is a lie that your own souls have forged. But he didn't really know what the truth of the matter was. He said, so, for Sabarun Jamil. 
You understand? So exemplary patience is more befitting for me in this moment. I don't have all of the facts, but I know you're lying. I know you're lying. I don't have all of the facts, but I know you're lying. So for me, I'm just going to sit this one out. I'm going to sit patiently on this until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes it all. And how long did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take? I want you guys to answer this question. How long did it take before Allah exposed that the brothers were lying? How long? How long was Ya'qub patient? He said, for sabrun jameel, beautiful patience. How long did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take before the truth of this whole situation exposed itself? Please tell me. When did truth of this matter expose itself? When did the truth of this whole situation expose itself? Question. More than 10 years. We're talking about 40 years later when the brothers fast forward. If you have the English translation of the Quran, fast forward to when the brothers finally confessed. Finally confessed. That was almost 30 years later. You understand? 40 years later. They finally confess and Yaqub gets the closure that he needs. 40 years later. 40 years later? <laughs> Absolutely. Happens. Unfortunately, you know, Emmett Till's mother didn't get, you know, the justice, but she got some closure because the white woman who lied and said that, you know, she finally confesses after Emmett Till's, you know, demise and the whole situation surrounding his death and his murder. You understand? And then years later, the person finally comes out and says, admits that, you know, he didn't actually whistle at me. Years later, person finally says, Oh, you know, it wasn't five black guys who raped me or who robbed me in Central Park. You understand? But it comes out. It comes out. But you have to be patient. God doesn't work on your time. God doesn't work on your time. For us, we're looking at it as a year went by, two years went by, three years went by. Those years don't apply to God. <laughs> Those years don't apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me show you the time frame, the time difference between the physical world and the spiritual world. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعِنْدَهُ one day, I want you to pay attention to this. This is a verse in the Quran. There are actually three different verses in the Quran that state the same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And a day to Allah in the metaphysical world, in the spiritual world, One day to Allah, to God, is equivalent to a thousand days of your reckoning, a thousand days of your counting. You understand? So while five years go by to us, that's not even one day to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day to Allah, one day to God, is a thousand years of our reckoning. You understand? I, I hope that this makes sense. So while time is passing us by, five years go by, ten years go by, and we're trying to figure out what's taking God so long, that's not even a day. <laughs> Those are days to us. 
That's not a day in the spiritual world. One day in the spiritual world is a thousand days of our reckoning. You understand? <laughs> so don't ever question why is God taking so long? What is, make, what is making a loss of Hannah Wattala take so long? Time is different. <laughs> Time is different on from one end to the other. <laughs> from the physical world to the spiritual world, time is different. Allah does not move on your time. And that also means that one day in the hellfire is equivalent to or will feel like a thousand days, a thousand years. You understand? One day in the hellfire, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire. La ilaha illallah. One day in the hellfire would be equivalent to a thousand years in the hellfire, a millennium. وَإِنَّ يَوْمًا عِنْدَهُ كَأَلْفِ سَنَةٍ مِمَّا تَعُدُّونَ لا إله إلا الله One day in the hellfire is equivalent to a thousand years, a millennium. لا إله إلا الله We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hellfire. لا إله إلا الله So, Sometimes we have to learn to let go and trust that the higher authority in our lives will bring the truth to the matter, to the surface where everyone can see it. Prophet Ya'qub, he described his patience as beautiful. Sabrun Jamil. Right? You might not even get the closure you need in your lifetime. You might not even get the closure that you want in your lifetime. Closure may come after you're long gone. <laughs> you may not get the justice that you seek in your lifetime. Justice may come to you even after you're gone. Think about how many people right now convictions have been overturned and you know they have been you know acquitted and things like that and they're dead. Think about that. Think about people who are acquitted today of any crime, of any wrongdoing. Meanwhile, they spent their lives in prison. They spent their entire lives in prison, died in prison. Only 10, 15, 20 years later, after their demise, they've been acquitted on all charges. You may not even get the justice that you seek in this life during your time here. But you trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-haqq, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. You trust that Allah is al-adl. That Allah is the just and the fair. And you know that fairness and justice will be established. Whether in my lifetime or beyond my demise. I know that. But some of us, we want justice right now. Right now. It has to happen right now at this moment. And then, you know, um, we... we have these intellectuals and they say, well, you know, you're going to wait on God. I ain't waiting on God, right? You're not waiting on God, mashallah. So you're going to go out and you're going to get it. That doesn't mean that we, we shouldn't seek justice. That doesn't mean we shouldn't seek justice. But there should always be just a, just a small little corner in our minds that lets us know that justice may not happen in our time. Justice may not happen, but that means just because justice doesn't happen in our time doesn't mean that justice is not going to be done. You understand? This is how we correct our understanding about God. We correct our understanding about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet Ya'qub, he described his patience as beautiful. The word jameel. Beautiful patience. Sabrun jameel. Which Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained as a type of patience that does not involve complaining. It is the type of patience that does not involve complaining. Obviously, this means not complaining to those whose resources and power over any given situation is limited. And instead, complaining only to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Who has power over all things and situations and whose resources are unlimited. And Yaqub stated in another part of the story, Indeed, I only complain of my grief and my sorrow 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So is that is that a contradiction? Because in one ayah he said, for sabrun jamil. So for me, what is most befitting for me is a beautiful patience. But then in another ayat he says, Inni la ashku bethi wa husni ilallah. That I, I complain of my grief and my stress only to Allah. Is that a contradiction? Because in one ayah, he says that he's going to exercise a beautiful patience. And in the other ayah, he says, I only complain of my grief and sorrow to Allah. So if we combine these two, is that a contradiction? No. By combining these two statements of Prophet Yaqub, we con we conclude that complaining to God, complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not contradict the quality of patience. But complaining about God, complaining about Allah to others does. Complaining to Allah is patience. Complaining about Allah to other people is a lack of patience. You understand? Be mindful of the complaints that you bring to friends, you know, your companions, your friends, relatives, you're complaining about God. How do you complain about God? You complain about a situation that Allah is testing you with to show your displeasure with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you with. You are showing, you are expressing your displeasure why me? Why am I? What did I do to do? I don't know why God is testing. I don't know what God is doing. I don't understand why he's testing me like this. What did I do to deserve this? You're complaining about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're complaining about God. And what you should be doing is complaining to him. What did Prophet Musa say when he fled Egypt? heading to Median, and he had nothing. He had to leave his family, he had to leave his mom, he had to leave his sister, he had to leave everything. And he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, Inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. Oh Allah, whatever good you have written for me, whatever you have for me, I am in need of it right now. Right? You can, you can hear, you know, you can hear the pain in his voice. You can hear the pain in his dua. Inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. Whatever you have written for me in the lohim mahfuz, in your preserved tablet, in your written will, your divine will, whatever you have written for me in your divine will, I need it right now. That's complaining to God. Not complaining about him. Not expressing your displeasure with what he's testing you with, almost as if you should be exempt from being tested. Sometimes we have this mentality that we should be exempt from being tested. I said, I believe, I pray, why is God doing this to me? I don't deserve this. So by com com Combining the two statements of Prophet Yaqub, we conclude that complaining to Allah does not contradict the quality of patience, while complaining about Allah to others does. In addition, patience is most effective when it is exercised at the onset of the calamity. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, indeed, true patience is demonstrated at the onset of the calamity, when it first happens. By exercising patience at the onset of the calamity, we show our submission to Allah, who will expose the reality of the situation in due time. So when you exercise patience at the very beginning, that shows your submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This situation is beyond me. I don't really know what to do in this moment. I'm going to ufawidu amri ila Allah. I'm going to turn my situation over to God. We say, I'm going to just leave it in God's hands. But then we go and we contradict that. We contradict that by trying to expose what is not in our hands to expose. And then we end up making a mess of the situation. If you're going to say, I'm going to leave it in Allah's hands, then really leave it in Allah's hands. 
If you say, I'm going to leave it in God's hands, then really leave it in God's hands and stop taking the matter into your own hands. <laughs> stop taking the matter into your own hands because you end up making the situation worse. So by exercising patience at the onset of the calamity, we show our submission to Allah who will expose the reality of the situation in due time. However, hastiness, moving fast, moving too quick, is from shaitan and may possibly cause a person to embark upon a particular action or actions that will end with regret because we are limited with respect to the information that we have access to. This is why we rush to accuse people. This is why we start to assume. You know why we assume? We assume because that's our mind's way of making us you know, comfortable with the situation. So we assume that you did this because of this, or you did that because of that, or you said this because of this, because this is our mind's way of trying to get a narration or trying to get an explanation quicker than we have access to the information to make it reality. You understand? So we assume, oh, you only did that because of this, or you only said that because of that. We assume because that's our mind's way of trying to make sense of the situation quicker then we have access to the information. We don't have access to the information. So we assume. Because our mind needs a narrative. Your mind needs a narrative. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. It's very dangerous. Submit to the fact that I don't really know what's going on, but I do know in, in due time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose it. Exactly what Yaqub did. He said, you guys are lying. I don't have the tools or the access to the information to prove you guys wrong, but I know that you're lying. And so I'm going to exercise, you know, beautiful patience and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose it in due time. Allah will expose it in due time. Hastiness is from shaitan and may possibly cause a person to embark on a particular action or behavior that will end with regret because we are limited with respect to the information that we have access to. The Prophet ﷺ cautioned us by saying, being pur purposeful is from Allah. Moving with purpose is from Allah. Ata'anni min Allah wa la'ajla min shaitan Being purposeful and moving with purpose is from Allah. While being hasty is from shaitan. Prophet Ya'qub had to make the emotional and mental reservation that his son was gone. And there was nothing that he could do about that. He did not know if his son was dead, cast away into some foreign place, or lingering in the bottom of a cold, empty well. The plethora of emotions that he experienced in that moment of fear, hope, anxiety, etc., are all too common in our society where children, and more specifically black children, go missing at rates that are beyond astronomical. Just think about it. Think, put yourself in Prophet Yaqub's situation where he lost his child. His son disappeared. Right? This happens in America every single day. Every single day in some of our major cities, while we are focusing on the murder that went on last night, the shooting that went on last night, right? The shooting that happened in this city, shooting that happened in Philadelphia, shooting that happened in Chicago, shooting that happened in LA, shooting that happened in North New Jersey, shooting that happened in Brooklyn, New York. While we're concentrating on the murders and the shooting, meanwhile, in those same cities, black children go missing every single day. but we, we don't shed any light on that. And there are parents that are sitting in Prophet Yaqub's situation right now don't know where their children are. 13, 14, 15 years old, 16 years old, missing, ain't seen them or heard from them in days. Can you imagine, man, subhanAllah, may Allah protect all of us from ever having to experience anything like that. Can you imagine the emotions that Prophet Yaqub is experiencing. 
children go missing every single day in these same cities that all we focus on is the murder that go on in that city. But nobody talks about the three or four black children that went missing last night that ain't nobody heard from not answering their cell phone didn't come home. Why are we so programmed to only focus on the violence, but not focusing on what is happening to these children? How do children just end up missing? Baltimore, absolutely. How do children just go missing and never to be heard from again? And the only thing the news shed lights on is the murder. There was a shooting last night in Philadelphia. There was a shooting last night in Brooklyn, New York. That's all they concentrate on. Meanwhile, there's three or four or five children within that same city that never came home. Their parents can't get in touch with them. Nobody has heard from them. Day after day after day goes by and not any news coverage, nothing. <laughs> nothing. This happens every single day. Every single day. And some of these children are never found. And nobody ever talks about it. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> but all we hear on the news is the shooting that happened last night. The carjacking that happened last night. The shooting that happened in southwest Philadelphia last night. The shooting that happened in Wilmington, Delaware last night. That's all you hear. But the children that were missing... Some of these parents never hear from their children again and have to live with the despair that accompanies such a tragedy. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave believing parents hope of a family reunion in paradise when he revealed and those who believe whose descendants, whose children follow them in faith, we will join them with their descendants. We will join them with their children and we will not deprive them of anything of their deeds. Every person is held in pledge for the deeds that they have done. So even if you never find your child, inshallah, Allah will reunite you with your child in paradise. It's fine. You have to deal with the pain of losing a child. But you also can bask in the joy of a family reunion in paradise. Uh, in here, scholars, they classify patients into three categories. I'll leave you guys with this. We're not finished with the chapter. Perhaps tomorrow morning, inshallah, I'll finish the chapter. Uh, the scholars, they uh, categorize patients into three categories. First is patience in being obedient to Allah. Being patient and being obedient to Allah. Being obedient to Allah, being obedient to God requires patience. Sometimes, you know, our iman fluctuates. Our faith fluctuates. Nobody wakes up every single day with the same level of faith. Our faith fluctuates and it fluctuates based upon our obedience to Allah or our disobedience to Allah. That's the belief of Ahlul Sunnah. Al Iman Yazidu wa Yankus. That faith increases and decreases. Okay? So at the time that your faith decreases, it's difficult worshiping Allah, being obedient to Allah, staying within the, par the divine parameters requires patience. Nobody said worshiping God and being obedient to God was an easy task, it requires patience. If you're going to be steadfast and follow that path all the way to the end, that requires patience. A sabra ala ta'atillah, being patient and being obedient to Allah. A sabra an ma'asiyatillah, the second type of patience is patience in staying away from what is prohibited, staying away from disobedience to Allah. That requires patience. Especially if you are a recovering drug addict, a recovering alcoholic, or you struggle with drugs and alcohols at some point in your life. You know better than anybody to stay away from that. Maintaining your sobriety requires patience. Maintaining your sobriety requires patience. You know that better than anybody. And so just as a, a, a recovering addict has the mentality that, you know, I'm maintaining my sobriety day for day, right? Take it one day at a time. 
remaining, staying away from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same fashion, one day at a time. One day at a time. I made it through today without any major sins, or ma any major disobedience to God. Tomorrow's another day. And I just have to be patient. Being patient and staying away from disobeying Allah. And the last type of patience, a sabr on qadrillah. Uh, 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 being patient with the qadr of Allah. Being patient with the divine will of God. Being patient, being patient with the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, the things that Allah decree on us, we don't have some. Most of it, we have no control over. So we have no other choice but to be patient. This is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala decreed for me. This is what has been written by God, and I have no other choice. So I have to be patient with that. All right. So there are three types of patience: patience in being obedient to Allah, patience in staying away from disobedience to Allah, and patience. With the things that Allah has decreed for you. And it would appear that Prophet Yaqub had to exercise all three levels of patience. Here again, this is the book, The 70 Laws of Virtue, The Untold Story of Prophet Yusuf. If you do not have this book, you are seriously missing out. You are seriously miss missing out. Those of you who have purchased the badges, thank you. I appreciate that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. All of the proceeds go to Masjid al -Rawda, And you are uh, greatly appreciated. All right, so we'll stop there. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam a tasliman kathira wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. I got a couple of minutes for questions more so related to the topic, inshallah. Let's keep it on topic, inshallah. Let's keep it positive. Any questions, inshallah? Any questions? If not, then you know we can we can end it here. That's fine. Um, the, the, these conversations, they remain on Instagram, they remain on Facebook, and I also upload them to, um, my, um, YouTube page. All right. Is the book on Amazon yet? No, not yet. Still working. It's the end of the marking period. So I'm grading papers, logging in grades. I am mentally not in a space to finish that. Inshallah, I'll finish it within the next week or so. Let me just get past this. Can you repeat the levels of patience? The level of the levels of patience are three. Patience in being obedient to Allah. Patience in uh, staying away from disobedience to Allah. And patience with the qadr of Allah. Patience with the divine decree of Allah. Are you leaving books available on audio? Uh, no, I actually don't like the way my voice sounds. So uh, I would love to... Um, I would love to do an audio book, but I don't think I'm the guy for that. Um, how to purchase The Revolution of Love. The Revolution of Love, you can purchase it from our website, um, um, uh, rollthemasjid.com, www.rollthemasjid.com. You can purchase uh, The Revolution of Love, He Came to Perfect More Character. All of our books are in stock. All of our books are in stock, so you can go directly to the, our website and you can purchase it directly from the website. Do you believe patience fluctuates? Yes, absolutely. Nobody can maintain the same level of patience all the time. Yes, it fluctuates. What is the difference between patience and just not confronting injustice? Uh, well, people sometimes don't confront injustice either because they just don't want confrontation or they are already in despair, believing that, you know, they've already kind of shot themselves in the foot, believing that they're never going to get justice, so they don't seek it, all right? Um, but not confronting injustice is not patience. That's not what we're saying here. We're talking about situations that are that is above 
you know, here again, everything in context, right? We're talking about things that you don't necessarily have, you know, you don't have a pulse on, you don't have your finger on. Prophet Yaqub, he knew they, they were lying, but he did not know, there was no way for him to know exactly what happened, you know? So we're not talking about a situation, You here again, that doesn't mean that you should not go after justice. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't go after justice. Okay, I pinned uh, our masjid, masjid Rolda, roldamasjid.com. You can go to roldamasjid.com and you can purchase all of the books directly from there, inshallah. What's the difference between being patient with Allah and being patient with his decree? It's the same thing. If you're patient with Allah, then you're. we're talking about being patient with the things that he has decreed for you. It's the same thing. Don't get caught up in the semantics. Um, please don't purchase the book via Cash App. Go to the website and purchase the book directly from the website. If you're talking about the Cash App link for Meshit Arolda, it's, it's the Cash App sign, Rolda Meshit. Roll the masjid, but don't purchase any of the books cash app. All right. Well, I thank you for that, Sister Olivia. Much appreciated, but I'm sorry. I'm gonna sit that one out. <laughs> I, I really don't. I, I really don't think uh, my voice on an audio book would be. You know, you need a. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, the actor guy with the with the deep voice. But uh, at some point, we'll be up for the task. I don't know. Maybe one of my children will do it. Um, if Yusuf's father knew the brothers were lying, uh, didn't he try to look for Yusuf? Well, at that time, Prophet Yaqub was an old man. He was an old man. <laughs> you know, like you're talking about a guy's old. He's walking on a cane. Like you're talking about James Earl Jones, right? You're talking about a guy who's old, you know, going out to search for, for Yusuf. I mean, all he has is, you know, his wives who are old as well. And then he has, you know, his sons. And I mean, he was a prophet. Keep that in mind. At this time, he was a prophet. So he knows that this is a test from God. He knows that this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's going to be patient, knowing that this is something that Allah is testing him with. It's the same thing when the Prophet ﷺ was being tested with the reputation of Aisha, when Aisha was being accused of adultery. The Prophet ﷺ, he knew who was behind it. He knew the hypocrites were behind it. However, he didn't go out and search for to try to find, you know, the, the truth of the matter. He was patient until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it in due time. So prophets and messengers, they function a little different than we do. You know, they know that this is a test directly for from Allah specifically for them. So they handle their situation a little different. Okay. Hope that that makes sense. MashaAllah, you guys are asking some really good questions today. Alhamdulillah. You're asking good questions. So when the questions come like this, I can do this all day long. But when people start asking weird stuff, it's just like, all right, let me just go ahead and uh, let me just go ahead and cancel this. We will do this another time. So you can tell the the intellect of an individual by the type of questions that they ask. They asked Abdullah bin Mas'ud or the uh, Abdullah bin Abbas or the Allah how did you reach this level of knowledge? And he said, "Bi disanin saulin wa qalbin akul." He said, "By asking the right questions." And by retaining the information that was given to me. You understand? You reach the level of knowledge you reach by asking the right questions. The scholars, they say, uh, that knowledge is a treasure. And the key to getting to that treasure is the right question. You, you want that door to open, you have to ask the right question. Insurance company, companies are deceitful. How do you get justice without the financial resources? Patience. <laughs> if you don't have the finances to fight them in court, you have no other option but make dua. Make dua against them. The power of, of, of dua. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to the dua of the oppressed person. So by being oppressed is kind of like paradoxical. Like you don't want to be oppressed, right? You don't want to be the person that's being taken advantage of. But also being oppressed actually puts you in a very privileged um, position with, with God. Make dua against them. It doesn't matter whether they Muslim, non-Muslim, it doesn't matter. A, a haq, a right was taken away from you unjustly. Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them what they deserve. Allah saw what happened. Allah saw the injustice. He's aware of the injustice. Allahu basirun bil ibad. Allah is all seer of his servants. Wallahu khabirun bima ta'amalun. Allah is aware of everything that you do. Why don't these things resonate with us? Stop making these things like... Like sometimes I just feel like, like subhanAllah, like where are we at? Like are, are are we actually practicing Islam? Are we digesting this stuff? Or is it just, you know, we know it's in the Quran and, you know, that's that's it. Like this is real. This is real. Allah saw what happened. Allah is aware of what happened. Allah knew what was going to happen before it happened. You know that. The insurance company that took advantage of you don't know that. You have home court advantage. As a servant of God, as a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who prays five times a day, you have home court advantage. When you're out in the world and you're dealing with people who are just completely disconnected from all things divine. Completely disconnected from all things divine. You have home court advantage. They don't believe in God. They don't lead with God. God, Their lives are not godly centered. <laughs> like Everything that they do in their lives is not centered around their consciousness of God. But you are. You are. Use that to your advantage. Nah, man, this is not some theory that, you know, is just in the Quran. Nah, this is real life. We practice this. We eat, sleep, drink this, man. You serious? Nah, man, we got to go deeper and stop swimming on the surface. Go deeper in your practice of Islam. Incorporate that into your life so that it becomes a lifestyle and not just a religion. It's not just a religion. It's not something that we just practice on Friday and go to Jumu'ah on Friday or, you know, pray and after prayer is over, that's it. Back to our normal lives. No. This is culture. This is part of who we are. This is part of who we are. And this is what separates Islam from every other religion because this is our way of life. This is how we live. It's not something that I am. Muslim is not something that I am. It's something that I do. Do Islam, man. Got to incorporate that into our lives until it becomes second nature, man. Drinking with your right hand is not even something that you have to think about. This is something that just happens instinctively. How should we deal with vaccine mandates if one is against employment opportunities? I, I've dealt with that. I'm, I'm done with the vaccine. <laughs> Please don't ask me any questions about vaccination. Don't ask me any questions about that. I dealt with that. The, the same month it came out, my stance has not changed on that since. You got to do what you believe is, uh, you got to do what you believe is, is best for you. Uh, the sweatshirt, this is uh, our brand, um, DLXX 570. DLXX, let me just clear the air <laughs> because so many people keep asking and I'm just, I don't understand. So you can go to our um, Instagram page, my Instagram page, uh, S underscore Muhammad, uh, S, S underscore Muhammad apparel, right? S Muhammad apparel on Instagram. And we have all types of apparel. We have sweatshirts, we have hoodies, we have jackets, we have pants, shorts, we have a whole bunch of things. The DLXX are the Roman numbers for 570. 550, 10, 10. And the D stands for 500 in Roman numerals. The L stands for 50. The X stands for 10, 10. 570. 
all right? 570 is the year that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. So this is my unique way of trying to keep Muslims connected with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Keep Muslims connected with Islam, keep in a fashionable way. All right, so when people ask you, what does the DLXX stand for? You get a chance to explain, you get a chance to give dawah. You understand? And you are representing something that is part of your faith in a stylish, fashionable way. So you can go to our um, Instagram page, um, uh, S. Muhammad Apparel, S. Muhammad Apparel on Instagram, inshallah. And you can take a look at the stuff that we have. And alhamdulillah, the, the, the stuff just goes very quickly. So you go might go on the site and you might see things on there and you might send an inquiry about it and it might not be there. Um, we don't take the pictures down. We leave the pictures up so people can see, you know, what we have. We take, you know, we ask brothers and sisters who buy or purchase from, uh, from, the, from the line to, you know, post pictures. So you'll see pictures of people who have, you know, purchase things, you know, beforehand. Um, and alhamdulillah, the, 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 the line is doing fairly well. Overgarments? Nah. I have a wife that sells overgarments. I have two wives that sell clothes. So you can check them out, inshallah ta'ala. But I don't sell women's clothes. I mean, the, the women can buy the clothes and wear them, but uh, I'm not into... Um, <laughs> I'm not going to sell overgarments. That's, that's not my thing. All right. Any other questions? <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions related to <clears throat> related to the story that we talked about? You touch on a great point about asking questions, something, and talking about Allah instead of talking to Allah. Uh, any more pointers? Uh, tons of pointers. <laughs> tons of pointers. So, um, inshallah ta'ala, I, I see that there are not more, uh, not more questions. Um, so the link to her, um, I think her Instagram page is Tuesday Melody. Uh, and my other wife is, um, pretty, pretty mom, pretty mother, JB. You can go to their Instagram pages and they all have their own businesses and they're selling their own things. Uh, this class series is not every weekend. Um, not every weekend. Uh, let me scroll up. What community are you in? We are located in, in Newark, Delaware. The masjid will be in Newark, Delaware. Newark, Delaware, inshallah. So we're still in the process of um, getting the building, inshallah, hopefully before Ramadan. Uh, was there a quote for this chapter or will it be discussed with the other remainder of the chapter? Uh, I'll try to come on tomorrow morning and finish the chapter. There's a quote at the end of the chapter, inshallah, that I think is uh, sums up the whole entire uh, chapter inshallah so uh, I'll try to do it again tomorrow morning inshallah Jazakum um, um, Allah my wife also has the um, um, the pretty kits so for those of you who would like to purchase the pretty kit you can go to her Instagram page uh, pretty mother pretty life of a, a mother I believe or pretty mother JB uh, and for the other one, for the overgarments or clothes that she sells is Tuesday Melody. Um, so you can kind of take a look, look around, inshallah, and see, um, let's see their pages. When is the next class? The next class is hopefully tomorrow. We'll try to do it tomorrow, inshallah. Let me just um, make sure on Instagram. And 
The other one was Tuesday Melody. And you can find both of them on Instagram. Inshallah. All right. Jazakum Allahu khairan wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.